Welcome to Electron Line and now to understand photons better we're going to go to the other side of the spectrum we're going to look at radio waves the very longest waves of the electromagnetic radiation band so if we go back and take a look at visible light rays imagine that this is a piece of paper and let's take a look at the side of the piece of paper so in other words let's take a piece of paper and look at it just edge on like that and the width or the thickness of the piece of paper is about one tenth of a millimeter now, as light zooms by, let's say there's a beam of light zooming by this piece of paper, and of course it's doing that at a speed of 186,000 miles per second. While it's passing by this width of this piece of paper, light will go up and down 200 times. The frequency of vibration of light is so enormous that as it speeds by and spends an incredibly small amount of time passing by the thickness of this piece of paper, it will go up and down 200 times and that's what I'm trying to illustrate here. There are 200 wavelengths of light as it passes by the thickness of a piece of paper, it only being 0.1 millimeters thick. Now compared to that, radio waves are enormous in size and length. The wavelength are as much as from one millimeter, which of course is 10 times the width of a piece of paper, so one wavelength will then equal to 400 wavelengths of visible light for the very smallest wavelengths of radio waves, all the way to as much as 100,000 meters, which is 100 kilometers. Wow, that's the distance, that's half the distance from LA to San Diego. So that's a huge wavelength. The frequency, of, proportionally, it's only 3,000 hertz for wavelengths of this length and 300 gigahertz for wavelengths of one millimeter. Still, that is a very small frequency relative to the frequency of visible light. So we'd like to talk about light in terms of they be, light behaves like waves because there's a lot of experiments that we can do that shows that yes it has wave-like properties and light also acts like particles and there's lots of experiments we can do that show that light does indeed behave like particles. Matter of fact, Einstein received the Nobel Prize for doing the photoelectric effect proving that light acts like particles. So when it comes to radio waves, where radio waves are this enormous length in wavelength, can we still talk about electromagnetic radiation of that type as being quantized as photons? So what is a photon? Do you think radio waves are quantized like photons? And so the best way to kind of draw an analogy to that is to first of all let's see how much energy is contained within a single photon of let's say radio radiation. Let's try these two different sizes. Let's try one at one millimeter and let's try one at a hundred thousand meter. So again the energy contained within a photon is Planck's constant times the frequency which is equal to Planck's constant times the speed of light divided by the wavelength. And I like that formula better because we usually talk about the wavelengths not so much about frequencies. And so this would be equal to 6.626 times 10 to minus 34 joules times seconds. Multiply that times 8, oh, not 8, but 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second for the speed of light. And divide the whole thing by the wavelength. Let's start with 1 millimeter here. So that would be 0 0.001 meter. And so what would be the energy contained within one of those photons? So it would be 6.626 e to the 34 minus times 3 e to the 8 divided by 0 0.001 and that gives us an energy of 1.98 1 1.98 times 10 to the minus 22 joules and then if we uh, divide that by 1.6 e to the 19 minus we have an electron volts so that would be equal to 0 oh no not 0 oh, where's my eraser I don't have my eraser with me all right, so that would be equal to 1.24 times 10 to the minus 3 electron volts. So a little bit more than 1 1,000th of electron volt. That's not a lot of energy contained within one photon of that kind of radiation. Now what happens if we go to this wavelength? So this would be for 1 millimeter wavelength. So now E equals HF equals HC over lambda for lambda being equal to 100,000 meters. And so that would be equal to 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joules times seconds times the speed of light. And now we divide that by the wavelength of 100,000 meters. So 100,000 meters compared to that, that's an enormous difference. So 6.626 e to the 34 minus 
times 3 e to the 8 divided by 100,000 equals, and so that's a, an energy, so that's an energy equal to 1.98 times 10 to the minus 30 joules, and converting that to electron volts, that would be 1.24 times 10 to the minus 11 electron volts. So you can see that we can think of radio radiation, radio wavelengths, as being photons, but then if we do, the energy contained within a single photon is so very small that measuring the effect of that would be virtually impossible. So it may be thought of as photons, but in all effectiveness, it's hard to see how a single photon can do any kind of reaction with a single electron or single anything because it carries so little energy. So if a photon that large is incident on a single electron, the effect of that would be so minute, you probably wouldn't be able to measure it. A way to think about it would be, for example, to think of the other side of the coin because we know that particles kind of behave like waves especially when they're very small particles, so like electrons, and we can actually calculate that wave, the wavelength of those small particles, like this is done by, this was invented or at least discovered by de Broglie. And so therefore, if we then calculate, let's say that the particles move at a speed, uh, let's see, velocity equal to 10,000 meters per second. So let's go ahead and calculate the wavelength of an electron moving at that speed, a proton moving at that speed, and eventually a basketball. Now for a basketball, we'll adjust the speed because it'd be difficult to get a basketball to move at 10,000 meters per second. So anyway, the wavelength of an electron moving that fast would be Planck's constant divided by the mass and then multiply times its speed with, let's say, 10,000 meters per second. And that would be the wavelength of an electron. So we have 6.626 e to the 34 minus divided by 9.11 e to the 31 minus and divided by 10,000 meters per second. And that gives us a wavelength of about 73 nanometers. So that would be kind of like the wavelength of ultraviolet radiation. If we do the same calculation for a proton moving at that speed, let's find out what the wavelength would be. So for a proton, the wavelength would be equal to h over mv, which would be the same Planck's constant, 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joules times seconds, divided by the mass of a proton is 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. And let's say that it's also moving at about 10,000 meters per second. And that would give us a wavelength of divided by 1.67 e to the 27 minus and divided by 10,000 equals. And there we would get a wavelength of about 40 picometers, which is 40 times 10 to the minus 12 meters. So it would be less than a 1 1,000, about 1 2,000, the wavelength of an electron. Now that would be a very difficult wavelength to measure. And now let's go to a basketball. Assuming the basketball has a mass of about a half a kilogram, and let's see that the velocity of the basketball is 10 meters per second. We throw it across the basketball court, and again, if we're correct, particles also behave like waves. So what would be the wavelength of a basketball moving at 10 meters per second? Using the same equation, we could say that the wavelength is equal to h over mv, mv, so that would be 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joules times seconds divided by the mass 0 0.5 kilograms, that would be a 5 right here, kilograms, multiplied times the speed of 10 meters per second, 10 meters per second. So what would be the wavelength of a basketball? Imagine throwing a basketball across the court and seeing it move like this instead of like in a straight line or a parabolic line. So let's find out. 6.626 e to the 34 minus divided by 0.5 divided by 10 equals. And so that has a wavelength of 1.33 times 10 to the minus 34 meters. Now, that's a wavelength we're never going to be able to measure. That wavelength is so small that for all intents and purposes, even though we said that all particles have wave-like properties, when they get to be as big as the basketball, finding the wave-like property is impossible to do. It's just not going to happen.
So even though we know theoretically basketballs should behave like waves to a very small extent, only when we have very small particles like electrons can we actually see the effect of the wave-like properties. And for a proton as well, but not as good as for an electron. So going back to electromagnetic radiation and photons, when we talk about the very small photons, the photons of gamma rays and x-rays and UV radiation, and yes, even visible light, they definitely behave like quantized pieces of energy called photons. And Einstein did a tremendous experiment proving that that was the case. But when we talk about radio radiation, when the waves get to be as long as 100 kilometers, can we think of it still as individual quantized pieces of energy? So that if a photon is incident in something, it can, in an instantaneous moment, give all that energy of that photon into some other property. The answer is yes, in a way, but not really where it can be noticed because the energies that we're talking about, especially when the wavelength gets to be 100 kilometers, 100,000 meters, the energy within one photon is so small, 10 to the minus 11 electron volts, that we really can't measure the effect of that. So it's almost like trying to measure the wavelength of a basketball, it's trying to measure the quantized energy of a photon of very long wavelength radio waves. So theoretically, yes, they are photons, but in practicality, it's not going to be able to be measured. And so that's where you begin to blur, the blur the concept between radio radiation being more like waves and less like particles, where gamma photons are much more like particles than they are like waves. And that's why there's so much confusion about the concept of photons when we talk about radio waves. Hopefully that clears it up. And again, it's another window in our understanding of what photons really are.